Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and today we will address one of the most funniest questions, which most of the times people uh, get confused who learn astrology through YouTube. Is Navamsha chart my chart, my some fancy chart, which is my own chart, or my husband's, my wife's chart? Is it my chart or my spouse's chart? Okay. Well, these questions should not come ideally, but uh, these questions come because we do not learn things in a systematic manner. Okay, sorry to say this, but we learn one thing from here and the other thing from there. From one astrologer we learn D1, from the other we learn D9, right? And then from somebody we learn D10. <laughs> so then we get confused, all right? So you may be thinking, why am I saying uh, this? Because if you don't learn things systematically, uh, then these, these kind of confusions will come up in every area of uh, astrology. Okay, so therefore, it's very crucial that uh, if you are introduced to astrology by YouTube, that's fine, there's no, no harm in that. Even I also have Astrology Basics playlist. I have the uh, OMG Astrology Secrets playlist. You can watch them. And there are around three to four hundred videos in those two lists combined. But, 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 I am telling you this. They are only good to give you an introduction to astrology because there are around 40 to 50 topics within astrology. Okay, so therefore, uh, it is not possible that you get all the understanding of astrology just by seeing my videos or some, some other person's videos. Okay, so therefore, um, then you might get these kind of questions. Okay, so... The thing is, why do we ask this question? Uh, is Navamsha chart my chart or the chart of my spouse? Okay, so there are many misconceptions. So the first thing, even before addressing this is uh, a very famous misconception that uh, Navamsha is the chart of marriage. Okay, so then uh, now one thing is clear. Everybody has a Navamsha chart. Okay, there's no doubt on it. Number two, there are many people who don't get married. There are many people who get divorced. There are many people who have physical relation before marriage. There are many people who have physical relation within uh, marriage, outside marriage. They are married to somebody and they are uh, having physical relation with somebody else. Sometimes people uh, are not married, but they have physical relation with two to three people because uh, in Kali Yuga, uh, people are becoming more and more animalistic like dogs. So then what do you do? Which, which chart do you see? <laughs> All right, so therefore, uh, the, the the first misconception you have to clear, and you have to throw this out permanently from your head, eternally. Never let this come inside. That Navamsha is the chart of marriage. No, 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 no. It is not. One hundred percent, it is not. It has a greater say when it comes to married life. There is no denial of that fact. But it is not, for God's sake, it is not the chart of marriage. I don't know from where this has come. Who has spread all these blatant lies? I, I, I don't know. I get all these questions all the time. In fact, uh, yesterday, uh, so day before yesterday, uh, was it yesterday? Ah, yeah, yeah. Today is Monday. So Tuesday, uh, today is Tuesday. So Monday was yesterday. So yesterday, on Monday, I had a fantastic recording with Aman Dedi Ji from Aman Devi Astrology and Gitanshu Ji. So in that also we have addressed uh, four primary misconceptions about astrology. All right. So in, the, in that uh, also uh, there are uh, many things which uh, we will discuss there. But here specifically about Navamsha, it is not the chart of married, married life. So, so what do I mean when I say this? If suppose you want to get married, so many times people say, oh, my D1 is terrible for marriage. Okay. So I have six Lord in seven, seventh Lord in six. Venus is afflicted, is debilitated, or the 12th Lord is in the seventh. Seventh Lord is in the 12th. All the fancy things, all the disastrous, uh, apparently, quote unquote, all the terrible, worst, worst case scenarios. Okay. You have, but suppose you have a very good D9. Okay. So then many times people think that. 
Oh, because my D9 is good, so once I get married, bang on, oh, everything will change. No, it doesn't work like that. The other side, suppose your D9, you have a uh, quote unquote terrible D9, you have the worst D9, okay, in the entire planet. Many times people also tell me, my D1 is good, but my D9 is terrible. So they are feared, they are fearful whether they should get married because. They think D1 is the chart before marriage and D9 is the chart after marriage, okay? So then they think, oh, D1 is good. That means uh, life before marriage is good, great, fantastic, and life after marriage is terrible. It's horrible and I'll, I'll suffer. So then they think that, okay, my D9 is bad, not that good. So what should I do? Should I get married or should I not get married? Or should I be in a relationship with somebody? Or should I not marry? Marry means uh, the legal marriage. Or sorry, not the legal marriage. The marriage as per scriptures. Okay, according to the rituals, where you promise each other that you will stay with one person for the rest of your life, depending on your religion, of course. So then, suppose the person asks. Suppose the person says, "Okay, if I just don't." do the ceremony is it still marriage or uh, is is that if i have sex with somebody that is called marriage well so all these complications come so therefore the first thing that you have to throw out of your mind permanently eternally is they are not post marriage and pre marriage charts okay they are no 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 by any means they are not and when i'm saying this i'm very particular about it okay why do you why do they say that navamsha has a greater say on married life why 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 do they don't say that navamsha has a greater say uh, on the relationship which you have with your parents or your career or with your siblings hmm? or with property or with vehicles why do they know, why do they do why do they say that it only has big say in terms of your marriage? Why in the universe do they say that? Because Navamsha is your inner frequency, your inner vibration, which gets revealed the most in front of your spouse. The Lagna chart is what people think you are. Should I repeat? The Lagna chart is what people think you are. Lagna chart shows your reputation. What is reputation? Reputation is an image which people have about me. Not who I am, about me. <laughs> so I may be a criminal, I may be a crook. But then people may think due to some reason that, oh, he's a very good person. <laughs> or it may be the opposite. That I may have a very bad image, but I may be a very good person inside. So the Navamsha is actually who you are. Yes, and Lagna chart shows your reputation. That is why the concept of Arudha, Arudha is the, so suppose for example, your Lagna, Lagna Lord is in the third house, okay? So then your Arudha of your Lagna, which is your Arudha Lagna is third from the third house. So one, two, three, three, four, five. So your Arudha is in the fifth house. So suppose your fourth Lord is in the fifth house, then the Arudha is, so fourth in fifth means it is in second from itself, okay? So then the Arudha is second from the fifth, which is the sixth. So then the Arudha of the fourth house, A4, is in the sixth house, okay? So if your Lagna Lord is in six, then six from six is eleven. So therefore, Arudhas are only calculated from the Lagna chart. Why? Have you asked? There is no Arudha Lagna concept or A9, A5, A6 in the Navamsha, Dasamsha in divisional charts. Why? Because Arudha is external. And external means D1, the Lagna chart. So therefore, if you have a good D1 versus a bad D9, or a bad D1 versus a good D9, it will not nullify each other. Okay, so suppose you have a very good D1. And you have a bad D9. So you should never think that the day you get married, your life will be ruined. No, no, it doesn't work like this. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Okay. That so-called bad D9, which you have, so-called. Okay. Now, 
you should also be very careful when you give statements like my d9 is very bad how do you know that your d9 is bad many times people tell me oh sir i am very fearful to get married my d9 is very bad and i ask them how do you know d9 is bad they say oh my lagnesh of d9 is badly placed or my uh, seventh lord is badly placed so so basically the problem is they they use the same rules to study d9 the way they study d1 the rules are not that similar of course the the general rules are similar for every divisional chart so for example if a planet is in dusthana in any divisional chart that planet will give you some level of challenge in that area of your life during that planet's dasha okay but because navamsha has to do with your internals you must first analyze the d1 chart to understand how much strength is there within that person's uh, heart i would say na inner strength of that person for that i am talking of d1 not d9 so suppose you want to analyze d9 okay first go to d1 forget the d9 keep the d9 aside first check the lagnesh of d1 how that is placed then you check the trinal lords very 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 important Fifth Lord, Ninth Lord, Fifth House, Ninth House. Are there are there malefics there in the fifth and ninth, or in the ascendant, or the Lagnesh is afflicted very badly? Lagnesh of the Lagna chart, D one. I am only talking of D one. Forget D nine now, okay? Or the Trinal houses are very badly afflicted. So suppose somebody has uh, Saturn uh, Saturn in third house, okay, and then uh, somebody has Rahu in the ninth. that same person so saturn will aspect the fifth and the ninth and rahu from the ninth will aspect the fifth so now both the trinal houses are under severe affliction from malefics okay severe affliction means more than one malefic whenever a house is under affliction by conjunction or by aspect from two or more malefics it is considered to be very severely afflicted so in that case if you see the trines or the trinal lords are very badly placed or the fifth lord and the ninth lord and the lagnesh all three are in dusthanas and they are or they are in enemy signs or in, or in debility means they are not well placed or they are in dikshunya which means opposite of dikbala okay then you know that the person's inner strength the inner capability which that person has and you also have to check the lagna lord sun and moon all right all these planets you must check i am talking of lagna chart here then you know that the person's inner strength is very less and then if the navamsha is showing difficulties then what will happen if the person gets married then because the spouse is staying with that person 24 hours okay i mean at least in a traditional uh, scenario may not be the like these days where uh, one person stays in australia and the wife is staying somewhere in uh, america not not that kind of a marriage but considering marriage means both are staying together all right 24 hours uh, i mean of course you can go to job here here there but you're staying at the same house okay same home <clears throat> may not be how home or house that depends on the relationship but at least the same house same building so in that case because the spouse is staying 24 hours with you then if the navamsha is indicating difficulties then it will happen that your spouse will be able to notice more of those difficulties if the d1 is very badly smashed the trinal lords okay and sun and moon and the lagna lord especially but suppose the navamsha is difficult and then you your um, lagna chart is good then what happens then good lagna chart is good means not that you have too many planets in 10th house or 11th house so no, that's not a good good lagna chart good means the trinal lords are well placed okay and sun and moon is also well placed including the lagnesh so then what will happen uh, even though you have challenges inner challenges but your ability to deal with those challenges you are very much determined to come out of challenges in life so then what will happen on the other side depending on your spouse if your spouse is good or bad depending on his or her nature they will start appreciating you more so this is a typical example of a 
fantastic D1 and a very bad D9 where married life will not necessarily be very bad. That will depend on that spouse also. If the spouse is always denigrating you for your weaknesses, for your challenges, difficulties or shortcomings, or the spouse can see that, oh yeah, he or she has a lot of challenges, but uh, he or she is trying to overcome those challenges. Okay. So therefore, um, you 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 should not give blanket statements like, oh, my D9 is bad, this is my partner will be bad. No, it has not. It's not your partner's chart. It is your chart. No divisional chart is your relative's chart. Should I be? No divisional chart is your relative's chart. Dwada Samsa D12 is not the chart of your parents. For God's sake, stop it. It is not your mother, father's chart. All right? It is not. <laughs> D3, the Rekkana chart is not your brother or sister's chart. For God's sake, please stop it. It is not. It is your chart. It is your dealings between you and your brothers and sisters. Dwada Samsa is your chart. How you deal with your parents. It is not how they are dealing with you. Or it is not how they are. Okay? Now imagine if this was true. That... Uh, now, Amsha was the chart of your spouse, husband or wife, and Dwada Samsa was chart of your mother or father. That is also confusing, mother or father. Then D3 is chart of your brother or sister. Then which brother? Suppose I have one elder brother, one younger sister. Then whose chart it is? Whose? Do you take approximation? Do you play lottery? Oh, one, two, three, four, brother, sister, brother, sister, like this. And whichever falls, oh, it's my sister, my sweet little sister. It's her chart. Oh, wow, it's my brother's chart. So it doesn't work like that. Okay, so when the rishis have written something, they I mean, do you think they are so stupid and so baseless to write such nonsense that this is your brother's chart, this is your sister's chart? No, in that case, you, you don't have to have any horoscope. You can just take the horoscope of uh, your uh, first ancestor, then you keep rotating. Like people say, uh, for example, they say, uh, Father is the ninth house, so ninth from the ninth is grandfather. Okay, this is another level of stupidity which people have. So then, okay, uh, so, so that means uh, my grandfather and my uh, son or daughter, fifth house is first son or daughter, is the same basically. So then, what do you do? I mean, then you will say, oh, take the fifth house as the ascendant and read from there. So if that was true, then. Uh, all the every instance in the life of your first child and your grandfather should be the same, right? Nobody can argue here, it should be same. But do you think it is like this? You can go and ask. So, suppose uh, you, you are married and you have children, and they are around five to ten years of age, or maybe they are 15, okay, or 20, the more the better. So, then if your parents are still living. Suppose you are in 50s and your son or daughter is in 25. So then you get to know a bit, of, bit about your children. And suppose your father or mother is uh, 75 or 80 and they are still there. So then you can ask them, my dear mother, my dear father, can you tell me about your father, my grandfather? And then you can compare. You won't get that answer. So whatever is there in astrology, with one birth detail, always remember, it is only for one person. Many times people tell me that when doing consultations, oh sir, this is my chart, uh, can you tell something for my son or for my daughter? No, it is not possible to say like that, okay? It is simply not possible. There are these fancy things going on in YouTube, especially, okay, uh, to see the life of your uh, first child, uh, make the fifth house as the ascendant. So suppose uh, a person has an afflicted uh, Venus, for example. Okay, let's take an example. So that means every relative will have an afflicted Venus. <laughs> so that means, now if you assume that you, your Venus is afflicted, Venus is in any house, okay. And you will have a bad married life. Let, let's assume for time being. Forget other principles. Let's assume Venus is the only planet which will decide. Man. And let's assume it's with Saturn. Okay, the Saturn-Venus conjunct, the most dreaded feared yoga of all yogas. Okay, 
or uh, Venus Ketu conjunction, or let's make it more worse, you know, Saturn Rahu conjunct Venus. Wow, icing on the cake. <laughs> so then now if you make fifth house, your uh, grandfather's Lagna, then he also has an afflicted Venus. So that means he also should have had a terrible married life, right? Or then your first child will also have a terrible married life. Anybody, I mean, you take seventh house, seventh house spouse, so spouse should also have a terrible married life. That, that, that we can at least understand that if your married life is bad, that person's married life will also be bad. I mean, we can at least justify it like that. But what about the other relatives? Eleventh house is your elder sibling. So your elder sibling will also have afflicted Venus. So that means any person you meet, your friends, 11th house, everybody should have a, this uh, terrible married life. Everybody will have an afflicted Venus. Does it happen like that? Does it happen whoever you meet, they are going on having uh, divorces? Anybody who has an afflicted Venus, write it down in the comments. Afflicted means one or more malefics conjunct or aspecting Venus or the 7th house. Write it down in the comments. If it has happened with you, all the human beings that you have met, including all the zombies and all the viruses, all animals, whoever you have met, they have had terrible married lives. All the human beings that you have met till now, whoever has an afflicted Venus, write it down in the comments. Let me check how many of, uh, for how many of you that holds true, okay? So therefore, uh, no divisional chart is your relative or your partner's chart, okay? It is your chart. It is your interactions with them. Okay. So next time, once you see this video, please, not for my sake, not for God's sake, for your sake, stop asking these questions like, Oh, Navamsha is my uh, spouse's chart. Uh, I have an afflicted seventh house in Navamsha. My spouse will be a cheater. No. See, in astrology, you can go on finding uh, negatives, how much ever you want. Okay. You can go on doing so there's no end to it okay you can go on doing it eternally because there are three houses of marriage and then there are times everybody will have malefics either in two five seven nine or eleven or in the ascendant from there it will aspect the sense so if you want to find negatives in your own horoscope you will get unlimited negatives don't worry about that okay so Everybody has malefics in their horoscope. I have malefics. You also have malefics. Your mother has malefics. Your father has malefics. But still people have lived. They have gone through the challenges. And that is what Lord Krishna says in the Gita. Dukhalam Ashashvatam. Material world is a place of misery. Alright. So, therefore, if you want to know more about Navamsha, then you can see the videos which I have on Navamsha. I have a lot of videos on Navamsha. This is another video which I have made. And then I also did a series with Vishti Larson, uh, who is a student of Pandit Sanjay Radji. He, has, he had a long detailed session on Venus, which we recorded on 2018. And then Navamsha, we recorded summer, October, November 2018. Okay. So you can type uh, Vishti Larson Venus. So you will see the series. It will come in YouTube. You can type Vishti Larson Navamsha. So you can see, you can study. Okay, so in there, there also you will find a lot of things like, okay, if this planet is in seventh house, the spouse may behave like this. The spouse may be like this. Okay, or your interaction may be like this. But for God's sake, don't tell that Navamsa is your spouse's chart. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay, so then because if you spread all these fake ideologies, then what happens? Uh, one of my friend, uh, he came, he saw some YouTube video, you know, Navamsha is your husband or wife's, uh, wife's chart. Uh, this is, he's a man. So uh, he said, my Navamsha Lagna is uh, Pisces. So then what he did, the level of stupidity is, <laughs> he uh, saw two, three girls for marriage. Uh, his parents had sent two, three horoscopes. And then what he was doing, the level of stupidity is, that, of course, that's not his mistake. He doesn't know. That's why he's doing. But from an astrological perspective, it's the highest level of stupidity. What he was doing is, he was checking uh, which, which girl has more planets in Pisces. Okay. Because 
that nawam sir will resonate more with that girl i said you idiot you fool bewakuf this is your horoscope not hers so stop finding planets in pisces in fact he was not finding planets he was putting planets in pisces my god how can you put planets in somebody's horoscope in a sign yeah he was literally putting planets in pisces you know so whenever he used to see one chart he used to obsess he used to be obsessed with the sign pisces pisces and jupiter any affliction suppose a planet is uh, suppose uh, you are pisces lagna and then you have a planet in virgo in 7th house saturn so the one of the three girls her uh, lagna chart had saturn in 7th in virgo okay and she somehow was a pisces lagna so he said oh i think this is the chart it's she only who i will marry but the problem is now this pisces is afflicted by saturn so maybe i should not marry her maybe i should find another pisces lagna girl or moon in pisces or sun in pisces atma karaka in pisces i said have you lost it what are you doing <laughs> all right so these these are the these these are very funny things can you imagine taking your navamsha lagna and seeing which has husband or which girl or boy has that now has that lagna and then trying to see if that lagna is afflicted and on that basis you are rejecting that horoscope my god this is this is like this is madness actually this is not stupidity also yeah there are, these things are going on why because he saw somewhere that navamsha is the chart of your spouse so he thought okay my navamsha lagna is pisces now there is another school of thought this is seventh house in navamsha is the lagna of your spouse my god then in this case virgo lagna okay so he has to go and find virgo so what if uh, he finds a virgo lagna girl with venus in ascendant so venus is in debility so should he marry her or not marry oh, confusing right <laughs> right so therefore uh, please understand that navamsha is your chart and not your spouse's chart all right thank you very much and uh, if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me you can go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him